Now the AM5 is a strain wave type mount, which means that you can't just unlock any of the axes and push it to a target. Now, this has caused a lot of people to say that you can't use these mounts for visual astronomy. Well, that's not true. You can actually do it. And actually it's kind of exclusively how I've been using it for the last week or so here, because I'm still waiting for the main telescope that I'm gonna put on here for imaging. Now the method that I've been using does require at least three accessories. So one of them is obviously an ASI Air. It really doesn't matter what kind, whether it's a mini, a plus, a pro, or the original in the plastic case. And then you will also need a guide camera. Now that right down there, that's a cold camera. You don't need a cold camera. I just, I'm missing one of my guide cameras right now, so I'm using that guy. <laughs> and then you need a guide scope, which is something that you can sight along with your main imaging scope. And what we're going to do with that is we turn this into an imaging camera essentially at least we're going to tell the ASI that that's what it's doing and we're going to use that to do our plate solving and thus our pointing while we actually do our visual astronomy with the main imaging scope once that's done and you actually get centered on a target you'd probably want to visually make sure that it's centered here in the eyepiece and then maybe do some fine tuning with this with a guide scope. And that's one of the reasons why you need a guide scope that is at least pointable so that you can kind of really fine tune how it's centered up. You know, especially when you start working at higher magnifications, that's something that's going to be essential. Now, if you really want to be old school about this and slew to your targets, of course it does come with a hand controller. Now it's got two different speeds. There's actually a little dot here at the top above the joystick, which if that's off, it's going to slew very slowly. That's probably something you're gonna to want to do if you are at really high magnifications. Now you just press down on the joystick and this thing will actually illuminate and then it starts to move quite a bit faster. And one of the cool things about this joystick is that it's it can control two axes at the same time, which is actually something that's a bit of a pain in the butt with the older type hand controllers that are from the 1980s that other manufacturers still put on brand new scopes. I don't understand it. Come on guys, this is the 21st century. Modernize a little bit. <laughs> okay, Vanto, venting over. So while I slew this thing around, I also kind of wanted to tell you something about the noise that this thing makes. This thing is quiet. And as I'm doing my visual astronomy, I really appreciate that because it's not a distraction. You know, it's, I find visual astronomy very peaceful. <laughs> and the fact that this guy doesn't make hardly any noise, it matter it's the quietest mount that I've ever owned, is just really kind of nice and refreshing. So yeah, I like how quiet this is. For some of you who are probably wondering, what is this big black box or periscope? This is a Telrad. This, this thing's old. These things have been around for a very long time. But I gotta say, of all the finder scopes that are out there, and I've tried a bunch, I've tried the right angle, right image up, and tried 50 millimeter ones, tried 30 millimeter ones. I don't like any of them, okay? This right here is still my preferred pointing device for at least manually pointing the scope. And the reason why is, I don't know, it's just really easy. It's pretty much indestructible. Yeah, sure, it's kind of big and bulky looking because it is something that I think it was designed in the 70s or 80s or something like that. But yeah, it just works. They're very reliable, it uses two AA batteries. And if you've never tried one of these, you really should try one. As at the observatory that I'm a member of, our largest scope, our 17 inch, has two of these guys on there, one on each side because they are just that nice. If you want to skip using the ASI Air and also the guide camera all together for polar alignment, uh, there's also another way to do this. It's, it's actually pretty quick. You just do need some sort of pointing device such as a Telrad up here. And first, I'm just gonna simply tell the mount to go to its home position, which you can hear it here, it's, it's going to its home position. And then we're gonna use the Telrad to basically sight up the mount with the North Pole, 
and then we'll basically be polar aligned. And that's just a rough polar alignment. That's not good enough for astro astrophotography, but <laughs> for visual, that's plenty. And then of course, in the app, there's a bunch of different tracking options. You can do side roll, which of course is for stars, and then solar for the sun and lunar for the moon. Now, in essence, there is a pointing solution that's available to you within the app that comes for the mount itself. There's a couple things that you need to do. So first off, you kind of have to tell it that there is a camera attached, even though you don't really have a camera attached. And on the left hand side, there's three different icons over here. Click the feed of you and just turn on a camera. It actually doesn't matter what camera it is. It could be any camera, really. And then in the app, you'll see that there's actually like two different square boxes that will show up. One of them's a blue box and the other one's a red box. And I've actually, I've scanned up to the app here, up to, we're going to go to home and home am. Sorry, that's a story. That's a start straight up right now, even though it's daytime. And then I just hit go to, and the scope will go to that. Now, you can see this is, it's pointing right now where it thinks that HOMEM is. And if it wasn't actually there, then you would probably take your hand controller and you would basically start making your corrections and so forth. And then in the app, there is a little sync button right next to the go to button. You just click that. And then that would basically make the correction telling them out, okay, this is actually where you are pointed. And there you go. You can start going to other targets from there. So in summary, if you do want to do just visual astronomy with the AM5, it's definitely a contender in the market. The only thing is, is you can't unlock any of the axes and actually push the scope to a target. However, I don't really think you would want to. And as fast as this thing moves and also as unobtrusive as it is, like I said, it's really quiet. I think it's pretty enjoyable to just kind of use all the control systems. They're pretty intuitive easy to use and they're kind of smooth and there's no delays in anything too, which was actually kind of surprising to me. All right, so let's quickly review the three different techniques that I've kind of shown you in this video. So first, there is using the ASI Air and then the guide camera. This is probably the most expensive way of doing it because it requires you actually buy a couple of additional items. However, it does have the plus and the pro of being you know, basically a very, very accurate pointing solution. When you get to a target, you know what target you are at. You're not accidentally pointing at something else and therefore it might like ruin the rest of your night and confuse you. Now in method two, where you're using the hand controller, I think one of the pluses of using the hand controller and just slew into your targets is that this method is going to teach you the sky the best, okay? If you want to start learning the sky, learning where things are up there, that's probably one of the best methods to do it, is use paper charts and slew to stuff by eye, using the Telrad to basically point the things and then refine your pointing via the hand controller. And then the third method that I showed you, I actually kind of think I like that one the most because it doesn't require that you buy anything. You know, you don't have to buy an air or a guide camera or a guide scope. You can just basically start using the thing visually. Now, the downside to using the app with either the ASI Air or the third method that I showed you is that it does ruin your night vision a little bit, but you can always put a gel over your phone or use a filter on your phone to turn it red so that it doesn't harm your night vision. Now, one of the cool things too about that third method is that because you're using a map of the sky, I think it kind of has that benefit of kind of teaching new sky a little bit better. With the old fashioned hand controllers where you're just typing in a name or a number for an object, I, I always hated this method because it didn't teach you the sky and you didn't really learn where things were in space. You just kind of typed in uh, that particular object and it went there. And so when it came to like actually pointing stuff out in the sky, you were kind of always a bit lost unless you had this thing. So you kind of, in essence, became a slave to the hand controller. And I think that the, the app that ZW has made because it has a map in it, it's, it's a bit of a hybrid that is kind of an in-between where it will teach you the sky, you know, both visually and through the app and through your telescope. So overall, like, yeah, it's a good, unobtrusive kind of way of doing visual astronomy.